that's another huge piece, you know, coming to real estate investor association meetings, um, just getting to know, join Facebook groups with other like-minded people, like all that, you know, all feeds into the big picture. There's not really one single, you know, silver bullet. It's just I'm constantly at this point, you know, like taking action towards anything related to getting it closer to a deal, and then in the process creating luck and creating you know, opportunities. So with this one, we purchased it for 203, including the wholesale fee. I still work with this wholesaler to this day. Uh, in fact, I've now actually consulted on a couple of his flips, which is really cool. Um, repairs on this were a bit more than normal because of the $11,000 foundation repair, and we did a roof on this one as well. So um, a cosmetic renovation has a rule of generality, not really a rule, but a guideline. Um, you can roughly estimate at $20 to $25 per square foot for just cosmetic. Um, this house was 1,300 square feet. Um, and so it kind of fits those numbers, so that's why I use it as an example. You know, 1,300 square feet, $26,000. Um, the foundation repair was 11 and the roof was 14, so we ended up around 54. Um, you know, spare those two large ticket items, it would have been, you know, a $30,000 kind of cosmetic renovation. Yes. So on the closing commission, did you have a realtor help you sell it? I did, yes. So you still made a profit? Yes. Yes. You still made a profit. Yeah, on all of these transactions so far, I've listed them with an agent um, at no, at 5% is typically what we do. Um, so, yeah, there's definitely, there's, there's a, uh, I'm not selling these, there's commissions still being paid out. Um, and on this one, again, use hard money. Um, we actually got an offer above asking, we're asking three, uh, 339. Um, had it uh, under contract um, in like three days, 5,000 over asking. They wanted 5,000 in concessions. I knew it would appraise, so I'm cool with that because you know, if they want a little bit of help, I'm all about you know, helping if I can help a home buyer get into the house. They want to pay five thousand extra. If the bank's cool with it, it's sweet. So, and this one was actually really, uh, you know, solid. Actually, doubled the profit of the last deal. Uh, we'll be at fifty-two on that. So, despite even you know, even if with it being more expensive to repair and um, listed, I mean, the other one's listed as well. Still, how long was it on the market when you missed it? You go through. This one was very short. This one was eight days. Yeah, that's a hot market. Hot market, yeah, yeah. It's uh, that was when when you're the turnkey products like that, they tend to go really quick. Like, um, so it's yeah, it's nice. When you're right. you decide to wholesale, and how do you protect your interest? Great question. So once you have the property under contract, you so the sellers agreed to sell it at a certain price. Um, you have the right then to to close on that property um, to protect your interest so the seller doesn't go around your back if that's what you're concerned of. Um, you can record that, you can have that document recorded. Um, and then that will cloud the title in the event that they actually try to sell it. Um, Do you write your back. contract with your name and or a signee? Yes, yes. Uh, use my company's name and or a signee. When I first started, I used my first, you know, first and last name and or a signee. Um, I don't record, I haven't on any of the contracts recorded because I haven't felt the need to uh, do that um, just because of the relationship, just the interaction and the relationship I have with the seller, it wasn't anything like, they, they knew I had the right solution for them, they weren't gonna try and like, play my number against someone else. So um, when I first started though, I, I did hear of stories of like another wholesaler oh, stealing this deal and stuff and, that caused me to kind of be a little over uh, protective, I think, at um, like different meetings and just kind of not talk about the deals I had. And then I realized like, there's so many deals out there, there's so much, if you, once you start looking, that there's no reason to keep, to, to like hide your stuff. Like most people just want to help. Like most, when you talk, start talking about your deals, then you actually have things like, that you can relate with other people on and then they'll give you an idea that you can hear of. So that was something I learned in the beginning. I had this, false sense of scarcity around deals and stuff, which 
now I'm like, oh no, just tell, talk about your deal with everybody, you know, and you'll, only more good will come from that. Mm -hmm. Yes? So what in terms of you keep a property and actually buy it or wholesale? That's another great question. Usually the numbers, how the numbers will play out. Um, so as an example, I don't have a, a slide for this one, but there was a property that talked to the seller, um, he wanted to sell in Longboat, they wanted to sell it for, he didn't, wouldn't take less than 245 for it. After repairs, I knew it was at least 310, but that's a pretty tight window to do something with. But I still knew it was less than, you know, you couldn't buy it at that price on the MLS. So I'm like, all right, well, I'll get it under contract and see what I can do with it. Um, got it under contract at 245. And then ended up, uh, you know, just advertising it um, at 269. So I threw it up there. And then um, had a ended up selling it to a landlord or a buy and hold investor for 260. So I dropped 10,000. It made sense to her to buy it at 260 because she was going to go in and not do the level of renovation I was. She was going to rent it out. Um, so it made sense. So everyone wins. Um, the seller gets what they want. Um, the buyer ended up with. Buy a whole property, and then I made a fifteen thousand dollar, you know, just basically a sign fee. You know, so, um, so what percentage do you use in order to determine if it's a good deal? Another good question. Mm -hmm. uh, my so look at a few different things, but generally the the uh, profit is going to be it's going to fall it's ten to twenty percent of the after repair value. It's going to fall in there depending on, and it's kind of a wide range, I know, but it depends on the market really that you're in. Where you're operating, it's never less than 10%, and it's never less than 25,000. That's the that's the kind of my low threshold. Um, if I'm going to take it on as a flip, because I my number one rule: don't go to jail, don't do anything that's going to put you in jail or uh, pull you out of the game. Number two: don't lose money. No, I think right? you look in an order. I got no, yeah, I'm not my best <laughs> color, yeah. So, but those are like like core principles of like you know business. So. Like right up there with, and so just as important as not going to jail is don't lose money. Like so, um, and you heard, you've heard that before. It's, you know, so you say you don't go more than twenty five thousand and no less than ten. So, oh yeah. So basically, my I look at what what's this property going to sell for after it's completely renovated. This one, for example, three forty five. So my target profit, just without even crunching any numbers, is going to be you know ten percent is thirty four thousand. 20% would be you know, twice that, about 70,000. 70, so I'm already thinking, okay, in my head, it's going to be somewhere between 35 and 70. Um, you know, if 10%, you know, if, if it ended up being below 25,000, then I wouldn't even, wouldn't probably wouldn't touch it because if an unexpected repair uh, occurs or if I have to drop the sale price, go to like another $10,000 to sell it, or the market shifts, for example, I like to position myself with the minimal risk as possible. So I'm willing, I'm not, I'm not often, but I'm willing to break even on a deal if you know everything goes wrong and I walk away and I have a ton of lessons, I haven't lost money, it's still a good deal. Yeah. But that's why I set that minimum threshold because I, and I've never been in that position actually, fortunately the lowest it's ever been was 24. So, uh, but I'm pretty risk adverse, it took me a year to, to you know, feel comfortable enough to leave my job, so I still take that with me into this. Even though we're playing with you know fairly you know decent sized numbers, um, you can mitigate a lot of risk and keep a lot of the upside potential. Yes. And what was your rehab hold time? Ah, so rehab hold time. Ah, uh, this one was longer. This one was about eight months. Um, had a contractor delay that uh, came into play on this one. So so that's another actually great time. There's unexpected. Holding costs and things that will um, there's so there's some unexpected things. Say you end up holding a property a few months longer than you what would like to have, would like to have, or planned on. That can easily be another you know two, four, six, eight grand over the course of those few months. So again, going back into why it's got to have that minimum profit amount because things happen, you know, things will come up. Um, you gotta embrace the problems. Like if the problems are, there's money in solving the problems, and uh, and that's where uh, that's where the, the good stuff lies is in solving those things. So 
Um, nothing goes as easy as it sounds, and no, flip, no project is ever as easy as uh, you know smooth 100% through, but that's to be expected. That's why you, at the end of the day you're cashing checks. Like, and during that eight month period, did you see the values in the market go up a little bit? They did go up a little bit, and that, so that helped offset. Yeah, so based on where the market's going, you want to take that into account too. My offers now are more conservative than they were a year ago, just because it's not, we're not getting quite those, those bites as quickly when we list a property. So you can flip in an up market, in a down market, um, I can say I've been flipping for four years. The market's been going up, so I can't deny. I haven't said I can't. I haven't gone through quote unquote the hard times. My mentor has. Uh, he's been flipping since um, '05, and then has gone through. You know, so I've seen down markets and up markets. And with down markets, you just want to position yourself with a larger profit ahead of you. But at the same time, you're going to find more foreclosure opportunity. So more things will be popping up on the MLS. So it's just about positioning yourself according to where, where we're headed. And how am I doing on time? Time? Uh, ten, ten minutes. Okay, cool, cool. great. Um, any questions on what we've covered so far? No, we've been asked. Can you summarize one more time about the percentage of your profit, how yes. you judge a profit? 25% of uh, ARV, you said? Yes. And 10% so of something else? Yes, so ARV is after repair value. Yeah. What I think the house will sell for based on what other homes have sold for after they're repaired in the same neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So I take that number and just to draw a line in the ground, the low end is going to be 10%, which would be 10% of that, you know, 34,500. The high end would be over here, 70,000, you know, roughly 68,000. So it's a threshold between 25 and 10. Yes, and then, and then I'm going to look at... Um, between. Yeah, so then I'm looking at what, you know, I'll take into other, you know, other factors into consideration too. Are there, am I going, is it just me talking to the seller or are there other possible, you know, investors making offers too? If, if there's more competition and I want this house, I'm willing to maybe take closer to the 10% side then if it's just me and it's my, maybe it's my first offer, it's just me and the seller, I'm gonna you know, start off with a much lower offer, a much more aggressive offer, and then work up kind of towards them or down to the 10% if I have to. Thank you so much. No, yeah. you're welcome. So yeah. <laughs> you don't hold anything? No, not any longer. No, I actually started, actually got into real estate with um, rentals, and that was like my first taste and exposure to real estate, and then uh, a couple of years later, I found out the whole creative aspect of it, and then I realized I had this epiphany of okay, so I've been making about two hundred and fifty dollars a month cash flow off this door. I can do flip one house and make basically what I would make in ten years off of that one, you know, one rental. So at this point right now, I'm just focused on wholesale and flipping, and then the long term plan is more our family. That's kind of where it's the flipping funds are going in. So, yeah, so I thought that there was probably other people like me that hated their life or, you know, got to a point where they, at least their career worked life, I should say, um, because they wanted to spend more time doing what they actually enjoyed outside. So I put together a way to, to digitize myself uh, and offer a virtual interactive train and coach people all over the United States, almost all over the world. But so far, just all over the United States. Uh, working with a couple of people in Canada soon. So, um, I designed Friendly Flipper Academy. Basically, it's a one stop resource. Everything that I've, that's gotten me from where I am to or where I was to, to where I am, you know, working in retail, knowing nothing about real estate, to be able to flip houses full time, and put it all in a virtual interactive training. So, we actually take courses. Uh, there's questions and answers based on the answers that you provide in the questions. You'll get different responses from yourself. Um, you're guided through um, just this entire immersive uh, learning experience where we show you exactly what to do. And then I also do weekly calls and, uh, to keep everyone, you know, answers to their questions and, and things. 
Um, oh, so shout out to my uh, student Kagan. Um, so basically, he embraced Friendly Flipper Academy, got in there, gone through all the lessons. You know, he's asking questions, he's taking action. Um, and 37 days in after, made 10,500 bucks. So, yeah, so shout out to Kagan. He got here. Congratulations. Um, he's in Florida, so it works. Wow. You know, all over. He's in uh, Florida. Yeah, he's in Tampa. So, uh, That's cool. Yeah, 10x his return on the academy. Um, the reason I went digital is because I can coach people one on one, and I do offer that. Um, but it's, you know, I can't reach as many people as I ever could possibly when I can, the, the way I can uh, through a virtual interactive training. But I didn't want to settle for something that's just like, here, watch this video. So this is like the perfect combination of creating me in a virtual way. Um, and then you also have my support on ongoing as well, too. So. How long did it take you to create the Hunt It was about six months. We started, yeah, we started June of last year and launched in December. And uh, yeah, been going strong since and constantly making improvements. Actually just came back from um, Lightspeed is the company that hosts the uh, platform. Yeah. Um, and they're out in Las Vegas. And um, I really love working with, with that company because they've uh, just, they're continuously just uh, pushing the envelope as far as what we can do to train virtually. So yeah. I haven't, I, now I can have the ability even to upload new interactive question and answer um, sequences from my phone. So as so we're loading, we're loading new content all the time to keep it fresh and, and keep it uh, keep ever, you know, giving everyone what they need to uh, to be successful in uh, you know flipping and also. Do you have students all over the country? I do. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Florida, Texas, Connecticut, California. I'm trying to fill in all 50 states. So, but yeah, so yeah, thank you, thank you. So if anybody has any questions. Be more than happy to answer them for you. If I can help you get on the path to your first wholesale or flip, I'd, I'd be more than happy to. So, thank you guys for being here. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, Jeremy. Oh, thank you. Impressive. Well, Polk is, uh, you know, got some deals. It does. It's stuff you can do. It does indeed. Very good. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Okay, so we've got uh, Overland. Funding, or we have fund, private uh, funding, and Jeremy, is this your opinion yeah. here? So we'll let you take that stuff away, and uh, I think that... Uh